They were about to start a new song and bam. BTK, one of the most notorious serial killers in the history of our country. Convicted murderer and the key suspect in the Atlanta child murders, Wayne Williams has been denied parole. Unveiling a roster of malevolent individuals concealed by the FBI. These notorious figures, marked by their gruesome crimes, pose a threat so significant that their hiding is deemed essential for public safety. Delve into the dark world of these hidden prisoners, their sinister deeds, and the measures taken to protect society. John Justin Bunting. The mastermind behind the infamous Snowtown murders is a malevolent prisoner hidden by the FBI for your safety. Between August 1992 and May 1999, Bunting, along with accomplices Robert Joe Wagner and James Spirit and Vlasikis, committed a series of gruesome murders in and around Adelaide, South Australia. Most victims were tortured and killed based on Bunting's unfounded suspicions of pedophilia, homosexuality, or perceived weaknesses. The bodies were discovered in barrels in an abandoned Snowtown bank vault, creating a chilling legacy. Bunting led a degenerate subculture, forcing victims to address him as God or Master. Social security fraud was a secondary motive, with the murderers impersonating victims to collect pensions. Bunting's sadistic acts resulted in 11 consecutive life sentences without parole, revealing the dark depths of his psychopathic nature. The FBI's decision to conceal him underscores the ongoing threat he poses. Ed Gein. The evil prisoner who the FBI chose to hide for your protection went by the menacing names of the Plainfield Ghoul and the Butcher of Plainfield. Operating out of his hometown of Plainfield, Wisconsin, Gein shocked the country in 1957 when police discovered his horrific crimes. Robbing graves, creating mementos out of skin and bones, and admitting to the 1954 and 1957 murders of Bernice Warden, the owner of a hardware store, and Mary Hogan, the owner of a tavern. Initially judged unfit for trial, Gein was subsequently determined to be legally insane, yet competent. In 1984, lung cancer-related respiratory failure claimed his life at the age of 77. Throughout his terrible upbringing, Gein's severe and intensely devout mother paved the way for his eventual descent into insanity. The FBI continues to hide the evil legacy of Ed Gein, a chilling reminder of the horrors lurking in plain sight. Andre Thomas. The FBI's concealed prisoner for your protection stands as an American convicted murderer on death row. One of his horrible deeds from 2004 was the vicious murder of his divorcee, Laura Boren in Sherman, Texas, together with her one-year-old daughter and four-year-old son. Following 10 years of auditory hallucinations, Thomas's spiral into madness culminated in a horrific crime scene in which he stabbed people to death and extracted their hearts. Diagnosed with schizophrenia, he faced trial with an insanity defense, yet a jury sentenced him to death in 2008. Disturbingly, Thomas was further horrified by gouging out both his eyes, ingesting one. Despite ethical debates over executing the mentally ill, the verdict stood. Housed in a Texas prison for the mentally afflicted, Thomas, an evil prisoner, challenges societal understanding and raises questions about the dark corners of the human mind. Randy Stephen Kraft. An evil prisoner concealed by the FBI for public safety gained infamy as the scorecard killer, Southern California strangler, and freeway killer. From 1972 to 1983, he brutally raped, tortured, and murdered a minimum of 16 young men possibly exceeding 51 victims, predominantly in California. Kraft's macabre scorecard discovered upon his arrest cryptically listed 61 victims, earning him his chilling moniker. Born in 1945 in Long Beach, California, Kraft's childhood was marked by modest living and a distant father. Despite his intellect and early involvement in politics, Kraft's descent into violence and deviance began in adolescence, leading to a trail of terror across California highways. Currently, on death row at San Quentin State Prison, Kraft's reign of terror remains shrouded in secrecy, a haunting reminder of the dangers hidden behind the FBI's protective veil. BTK Infamously known as BTK, bind, torture, kill, 
is an American serial killer who terrorized Wichita and Park City, Kansas from 1974 to 1991, claiming at least 10 lives. Despite occasionally targeting men and children, Raider primarily preyed on women, binding and suffocating or strangling his victims. His sinister rituals included stealing personal items as keepsakes and taunting law enforcement through letters detailing his sadistic acts. For years, Raider's troubling actions stayed unreported. Nevertheless, in 2004, he made a comeback, which resulted in his 2005 arrest. At El Dorado Correctional Facility, where he is presently serving 10 consecutive life sentences, Raider's shadowy past reveals a neglected upbringing and early indications of sadistic tendencies. The FBI, safeguarding the public, conceals this evil prisoner, a reminder of the hidden dangers lurking behind seemingly ordinary lives. George Emil Banks. The remorseless mass killer lurks in the shadows of death row, concealed by the FBI for your protection. 30 years have elapsed since his gruesome killing spree, leaving 13 lives shattered in Wilkes Bar and Jenkins Township. Banks, driven by a deranged mind, slaughtered his own children, four girlfriends, three other relatives, and an unsuspecting bystander. A cacophony of bizarre beliefs clouds Banks' psyche, including fantasies of an overturned death sentence by divine forces and a supposed Islamic conspiracy against him. Locked in solitude at the State Correctional Institution at Greaterford, Banks, now 70, exists as a pale reflection of the defiant murderer who once terrorized the Wyoming Valley. His mental deterioration, evident to the state Supreme Court, renders him incompetent for execution. A relic of northeastern Pennsylvania's darkest chapter, Banks remains hidden, a haunting reminder of the unexplainable horrors that unfolded on that fateful day in September 1982. Jerry Bergvin. In 1969, Jerry Bergvin made headlines when he escaped from Camp Waterloo, vanishing without a trace. Once a notorious Michigan criminal, he became one of the most sought-after men in the United States. Now, at 80 years old, the Department of Corrections has declared Bergevin too old to pursue, allowing him to roam freely after 44 years on the run. Bergevin's notoriety stemmed from his daring exploits, such as accelerating away from police with an officer hanging from his car window. His criminal prowess, alongside his wife, labeled them the Bonnie and Clyde of the 1950s. Despite being imprisoned in 1962, Bergevin's escape left the authorities baffled. Numerous leads and sightings failed to locate Bergevin, leaving his granddaughter Angela Michaels heartbroken. The Michigan Department of Corrections officially ended the search, adding to the mystery surrounding Bergevin's disappearance. As speculation persists about his fate, Michael remains dedicated to uncovering the truth, piecing together the puzzle of her elusive grandfather's life. Gary Leon Ridgway Enclosed in FBI secrecy is Gary Leon Ridgway, known as the Green River Killer and perpetrator of 49 horrifying killings. Ridgway's cruel techniques entail physical or ligature strangulation of vulnerable victims, primarily sex workers and juvenile runaways, followed by horrifying acts of necrophilia. He had eluded authorities since 1982, but because of developments in DNA profiling, he was apprehended in 2001. Even though Ridgway was the second most prolific serial killer in American history, he skillfully avoided execution by entering into a plea agreement and hiding the terrible reality that was kept behind bars, a sinister secret that the FBI had protected to keep you safe from this evil threat. Edmund Kemper Edmund Kemper, the third, born December 18, 1948, is an American serial killer who murdered eight people from May 1972 to April 1973. Known as the co-ed killer, he targeted female college students engaging in necrophilia, decapitation, and dismemberment. Found guilty in 1973, he requested the death penalty, but received eight life sentences. On August 27, 1964, at 15, Edmund Kemper argued with his grandmother, Maud Kemper, before fatally shooting her in the head and back with a rifle. His grandfather, Edmund Kemper Sr., was shot upon returning home. Kemper, unsure, called his mother and awaited arrest. Court psychiatrists diagnosed him with paranoid schizophrenia, leading to his confinement at Atascadero State Hospital. Release and Reintegration On his 21st birthday, December 18, 1969, Kemper was paroled from Atascadero against hospital psychiatrist recommendations. Released to his mother Clarnell in Aptos, California, he demonstrated rehabilitation. Lionel Tate Born January 30, 1987, gained notoriety as the youngest American sentenced to life imprisonment without parole, later overturned. In 2001, at 13, he was convicted of brutally murdering six-year-old Tiffany Eunuch 
in Broward County, Florida. The heinous act occurred during babysitting in 1999 when Tate inflicted fatal injuries on Eunuch, including a fractured skull and lacerated liver. The prosecution deemed his actions cold, callous, and indescribably cruel. He was found guilty of criminal murder and will serve a life sentence without having to show his intention. Controversy ensued, criticizing Florida's treatment of juvenile offenders. After his initial conviction was overturned, Tate's life took a darker turn with an armed robbery arrest in 2005. Despite various legal battles, Tate is now confined in the Charlotte Correctional Institution, posing an ongoing threat to society. The FBI shields his existence, claiming it's for your protection. Brian Lee Draper On September 22, 2006, in Pocatello, Idaho, Brian Draper and Tori Adamsick, inspired by the movie Scream, brutally stabbed their 16-year-old classmate, Cassie Jo Stoddart, to death. After the murder, they filmed themselves bragging about the crime. Their chilling act aimed to imitate Scream and secure a place in criminal history, even though they only committed one murder from their death list. Cassie Jo Stoddart fell victim to Brian Draper and Tori Adamsick, who not only brutally murdered her, but also recorded their celebration of the heinous act. The sinister duo had plotted the murder and filmed Stoddart at school, just hours before the crime, providing crucial evidence for their conviction and life sentences. Draper and Adamsick's shared interest in horror films, especially Scream, fueled their disturbing plot to emulate the masked killer, resulting in a chilling death list with Stoddard as their prime target. Eric Smith Eric M. Smith, born on January 22, 1980, shocked the nation when, at 13, he brutally tortured and murdered four-year-old Derek Joseph Roby on August 2, 1993, in Steuben County, New York. Convicted of second-degree murder in 1994, Smith received the maximum juvenile sentence, nine years to life. Paroled in October 2021 after 27 years, he was officially released in February 2022. The case gained national attention in the United States due to the ages of the perpetrator and the victim. On August 8, 1993, Eric Smith confessed to his mother about killing Derek Roby, leading the Smith family to notify law enforcement that night. Smith, tried as an adult, became the youngest murder defendant tried as an adult in New York State history. Extensive medical testing by specialists examining brain function and hormone levels revealed no explanation for his violent behavior. Kenneth Young Kenneth's story is a 2014 documentary revealing Kenneth Young's life. At 14, he received four consecutive life sentences in 2001 for non-lethal crimes committed during a 30-day period. The U.S. Supreme Court's 2010 Graham v. Florida Ruling deemed life sentences for non-murder juvenile offenses unconstitutional, recognizing that children are different. Young's resentencing journey involved legal battles seeking release. Despite efforts, he received four concurrent 30-year sentences adhering to the Graham ruling. Appeals, referencing Miller v. Alabama, aimed for his release on time served, but in 2013, the appeal was denied. In 2014, Florida's reviews for juvenile offenders led to Young's release after 21 years not 30. Angel Resendiz Angel Maturino Resendiz, also known as the Railroad Killer, was a Mexican serial killer, rapist, and robber who infiltrated various U.S. states by stowing away on trains. Resendiz's criminal activities spread across multiple states, marking him as a notorious and elusive perpetrator with a sinister modus operandi. Angel Resendiz's known killings began in 1986, targeting a homeless couple, in 1991, he committed his first U.S. murder, beating Michael White to death in Kentucky. Over eight years, he traveled by train, murdering at least a dozen people near tracks. Nicknamed the Railroad Killer, a manhunt ensued after forensic and VI cap connections. In June 1999, he entered the FBI's most wanted list with a $125,000 reward. Texas Ranger Drew Carter contacted Resendez's sister, promising safety and psychological evaluation. Resendez, tracked to Mexico, was arrested. Richard Matt Protected by the FBI for your safety, Richard William Matt, an American murderer, gained notoriety for his multiple prison escapes, notably the 2015 Clinton Correctional Facility escape. Born on June 25, 1966, Matt's criminal history included serving prison terms for various crimes before orchestrating the 1997 kidnapping and murder of his former boss, William Rickerson. After fleeing to Mexico, he murdered Charles Perot in 1998. Extradited to the U.S. in 2007, Matt served a sentence for Rickerson's murder, 
but escaped in 2015 with fellow prisoner David Sweat. After a 20-day manhunt, Matt was killed by the U.S. Border Patrol while attempting to flee to Canada. The FBI's decision to hide Matt underscores the ongoing threat he poses, ensuring your protection from this malevolent figure. Joanna Dennehy Secured by the FBI for your safety, Joanna Christine Dennehy, a British criminal, orchestrated the gruesome Peterborough Ditch murders in March 2013. All victims, three males, succumbed to stab wounds, with their bodies found discarded in ditches outside Peterborough. Dennehy, sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order, targeted men during her killing spree, driven by a sinister desire for entertainment. The victims included property developer Kevin Lee, Lucas Slabashevsky, and housemate John Chapman. Dennehy's sadistic motives were fueled by a psychopathic mindset diagnosed with antisocial and borderline personality disorders during court proceedings. Despite her remorseless attitude, she was handed a life sentence by Mr. Justice Spencer, who labeled her a cruel, calculating, selfish, and manipulative serial killer. The FBI's decision to conceal Dennehy emphasizes the ongoing threat she poses, ensuring your protection from this malevolent figure. Pascal Payet Secured away by the FBI for your protection, Pascal Payet, a French criminal, gained infamy for his audacious prison escapes via hijacked helicopters. Born on July 7, 1963, Payet initially faced a 30-year sentence for a murder during a 1997 security van robbery. His criminal journey involved assaults, conspiracy, and a deadly armored car hijacking in 1997. Notorious for two helicopter escape in 2001 and 2003, Payet faced additional sentences and high surveillance earning the classification of a detenu particulièrement surveillé. Despite these measures, on July 14, 2007, he orchestrated another helicopter getaway during Bastille Day celebrations. Captured in Spain on September 21, 2007, he was sentenced to 15 years in 2008 for armed robberies. In 2011, he received an additional five years for his 2007 escape. The FBI's concealment underscores the ongoing threat posed by this malevolent figure, ensuring your safety. Robert Maudsley An evil prisoner stands convicted of multiple murders in England. Born on June 26, 1953, Maudsley's gruesome acts include four killings, one occurring in a psychiatric hospital, and two within prison after a life sentence for a prior murder. Initial inaccuracies dubbed him Hannibal the Cannibal and the Brain Eater for alleged brain consumption later debunked by the post-mortem report. Despite national newspapers rectifying the false claims, Maudsley remains infamous as the longest-serving British prisoner in solitary confinement. The FBI's concealment emphasizes the grave threat he poses, ensuring your protection from this malevolent figure. Concealed by the FBI for your safety, Robert John Maudsley, an evil prisoner, earned notoriety for a string of gruesome murders. In 1974, he garroted John Farrell in London surrendering himself for psychiatric care. Found unfit for trial, Maudsley was sent to Broadmoor Hospital. In 1977, he, along with another patient, tortured David Francis, a child molester, to death. Lalo Castrillo Hidden by the FBI for your safety, an evil prisoner was sentenced to 30 years for the intentional abuse leading to the tragic death of two-year-old Faviola Rodriguez. Convicted on September 1st, Castrillo, while babysitting his girlfriend's child, subjected Favi to physical abuse, resulting in internal bleeding and fatal bruising. The trial unveiled his shocking delay in calling 911, during which he researched karyogenic shock and child chokes on throw-up while sleeping. Despite nearly five years of legal proceedings since his 2018 arrest, the state autopsy and emergency room doctors confirmed the injuries were not pre-existing. District Attorney Gerald Byers emphasized the community's pursuit of justice, stating that the guilty verdict reached within hours by a dedicated jury, upholds justice for the innocent victim. David Berkowitz, the son of Sam. Born on June 1, 1953 in Brooklyn, New York, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, unleashed terror in 1976 and 77 by murdering six people, plunging New York City into panic and prompting one of its largest manhunts. Berkowitz's unsettling childhood escalated into violence after his adoptive mother's death in 1967. Joining the army in 1971, he became a skilled marksman. Berkowitz's diary revealed he set around 1,500 fires in mid-1970s New York. Driven by demons, he attacked couples, 
claiming five more victims. Arrested on August 10, 1977, he confessed, receiving a 365-year sentence in June 1978. Berkowitz's sinister acts, depicted in the film Summer of Sam, 1999, led to his confinement, hidden by the FBI to protect society. The term murder and its legal implications, distinguishing it from manslaughter, highlight the severity of Berkowitz's crimes. The revelation of these concealed malefactors sheds light on the FBI's imperative actions to safeguard the public from their heinous acts. As society grapples with the ongoing challenges posed by these hidden prisoners, vigilance remains paramount. Thank you for exploring this unsettling realm of criminal secrecy with us.